Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Totus Tuus Show. I'm Father Marius, this is Cathy, and we're delighted to have your company for this episode of the Totus Tuus Show. You know, dear friends, for many years now we've been reading and interested in Marian apparitions. Something very, very special happens at each and every Marian apparition. We have many, many that are approved by the church. I think, think of Fatima. We think of Our Lady appearing for six months and at the end she promised a great, great miracle. This spectacular event happens with the, the sun seeming to come towards the people. People are on their knees begging God for forgiveness. They think it's the end of the world. Witnessed by 70,000 people and thousands more in the surrounding countryside. Think of Lourdes, you know, this wonderful miracle towards the end of the apparitions, this spring of water, Bernadette digging, and then this man who was blind has his sight restored. And we have something like that in a lot of these approved church apparitions. But we're going to tell you about an apparition in this episode, which you may not have heard of before. Because when I heard about this apparition, my first reaction was, why did nobody tell me about it, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> like, how, is, how have they kept this one hidden from me? So we're going to speak about an apparition that happened in 1754, church approved in Colombia, Our Lady of Las Lajas, Our Lady of the Rocks, on the border between Colombia and Ecuador. And it's an amazing story, and we're going to tell you bit by bit because it, the story just keeps getting better and better. And so there was a lady, she was a widow called Maria, and she had a daughter called Rosa, her only child. And Maria one day was going to a village. A village she would go to a lot of the time, it was about seven kilometers away. She would go there, the priest lived there, she would go there for mass, and she had friends there. And when she was going there, a great storm broke out. And she was going along the side of the cliff. And she decided to take shelter in the midst of the rocks in a kind of a cave. And, but she was a little bit weary about it because there was a lot of superstition around and people said that this cave was haunted. But she went in and she started praying to Our Lady of the Rosary. And she got this tap on the shoulder. And she looked around, couldn't see anyone, but she was frightened and she decided to, to go into the storm instead of staying in the cave. <laughs> So off she went. So this was the first interesting thing that happened at the rocks. And Cathy, what happened next? Well, shortly after, she is going again to this village. You know, she seemed to travel back and forth. Um, and this time she had Rosa. Mm. She was carrying Rosa, who was a child of somewhere between four and six. You know. And Rosa was deaf and mute. Mm -hmm. Or Sorry, yeah, deaf and mute. And um, she's carrying Rosa, and she suddenly gets very tired just as she gets to the same spot. And it's very narrow pathway. And so she goes to the front of the cave, and she just goes to rest. And um, Rosa gets off her back and kind of heads into the cave and comes running out saying, M Mama, Mama, there's a mazita. And a Mazita was a half-breed woman, and, and, and a Mazita, and, and her child. Mm. And she comes, and her mother is like, I've never heard my daughter's you voice spoke. before. Yeah. She heard speaking. And she just quickly looked around, didn't see any woman and a child, scooped up Rosa, and ran home to, you know, with the good news at, that her daughter could now speak. So... Not long after, you know, Rosa kept wanting to go back. And one day she couldn't find Rosa. Mm -hmm. And they searched the whole little village, couldn't find Rosa. And then her mother remembered and she thought, I'll bet she's gone to the cave. So she ran to the cave and there was Rosa playing with, a, there was a beautiful woman. And at their feet was this child she had been carrying, was now on the floor playing with Rosa, this little boy. And they were having a lovely time. And the minute Maria saw them, she fell to her knees because she knew this must be Our Lady of the Rosary, the Mother of God. So we've had, you know, this tap on the shoulder, quite an interesting experience. And then her child, yeah. who hasn't been able to speak or hear since birth, is miraculously cured, amazing. 
And then she sees the child playing with the infant Jesus and her lady there as well. Truly extraordinary things happening. But that's not the end of the story. And <laughs> we see then that, you know, they start coming back, don't they? They start coming back to this place and bringing flowers and bringing candles. And of course, they wouldn't have had much money. So this was, you know, quite a thing to do, to keep coming back and bringing, you know, spending their money on candles and spending their money on flowers. Um, but what was to happen next was even more interesting. Well, see, all this time when they're making daily visits, they're not telling anybody because when Rosa was cured and they said they had seen a lady, they all laughed at them. So they it was their little secret. But then one day, after these daily visits, Rosa gets very, very sick and she dies. And it was on the 14th of September, right? The Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, which is, which well, is interesting. Well, that's right. That's right. So, you know, Maria is devastated. And, you know, after they had tried everything to save Rosa, and then suddenly Maria realizes and she picks up Rosa and she runs out of the village with her. Everybody thinks she's crazy. But she runs to the cave to tell the woman, to ask the woman, Our Lady of the Rosary, to bring her back to life. And when she goes, Our Lady is there, and she, she reminds her, she begs her, and she <laughs> says, I brought you flowers and candles. Which I cost us a one. fortune, yeah. yes. And Our Lady has compassion on her, and she asks her son, the child, to bring Rosa back to life, her little play companion, and um, Jesus does. And This is, I mean, this is extraordinary. So just... Just to make it clear, the child was dead. Oh, absolutely. And, and dead for a dead. little while at that stage. And all the villagers knew and everybody knew the child. This was a great, great tragedy that such a young child. Plus, she was a widow. So this was yeah. her only child. It was her only child. It reminds us of the, the widow of Nain, right? With it her, does, her own, yeah. only son. But that through Our Lady's intercession here, this child was brought back to life. Well, so then she, she doesn't go back to her own village. She has this instinct that she runs to where the priest is, where the church is. Mm. This is a miracle, and she's been given a great gift. And she runs, and by the time she gets there, it's very late. And the bells of the church start to ring. Nobody rings them, but they start to ring, and the whole village gathers. And Maria tells her story, you know, about Rosa being mm -hmm. raised from the dead. And people know that Rosa has been healed, you know, of her deafness some weeks before, or months before. But they're, you know, they're, they rejoice with R Maria. But the priest says to her, mm. you better be telling the yeah. truth. This better not be staged. <laughs> this yeah. better not be, you know, this better be real. Because, of course, they can't go now because it's dark and it's dangerous. You know, didn't have electricity then. Yeah. But they plan to go first thing in the morning. And it was a very dangerous spot too, wasn't it? Oh, very mud, mud dangerous, and very narrow, yeah. you know, rock falls and, you know. We're talking about the Andes Mountains here yeah, on the border yeah. of Colombia and Ecuador. So they come back the next morning, the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, and they see this great light emanating from the cave, don't they, Cathy? Yeah, and I mean, they, with the great light, they all crowd into it and there lit up with this luminous light, they can see the beautiful portrait of Our Lady, Jesus, and two figures, mm. St. Francis and St. Dominic, on the back of the cave. Absolutely brilliant. And they, they realize this is a miracle. And um, the, a whole devotion begins. Uh, a chapel is built at the cave. Eventually, in fact, we're now four churches later, and it's a huge basilica, you know, kind of that goes from the river basin mm. all the way up the cliff. But the interesting, uh, when the first chapel was built, a blind Franciscan had come to pray and was healed there, and he's the one that built the, the first church there, you know, and preached Our Lady of Lajas. Everywhere. So miraculous things began to take place. But yeah. Let's talk, a, let's talk a little bit about the image because I think this yeah. is really, really important. So just to recap, so Maria gets the tap on the shoulder, interesting occurrence when she's praying to Our Lady of the Rosary, 
And then her child, who was born deaf and mute, begins to hear and speak. The child dies and is raised back from to the life. Dead. And now they see this amazing light emanating from the cave and this miraculous image appears, kind of reminding us a bit of Guadalupe, right? But the image, so Our Lady is, uh, we see in this that she, it's, it reminds us of the woman of Revelation 12, the book of Revelation or the book of Apocalypse chapter 12. She's clothed with the sun. She That's has right. the moon at her feet and she has a crown of 12 stars. So, you know, in those days, we're talking about 1754, they would have had, the, the locals would have had, the, there was a lot of superstition and the god of the sun and the moon. And here is this woman, she is greater than then these all, gods. Than these things, yes. These the moon things, is right? under her feet. So, kind of similar to what Our Lady was saying in Guadalupe as well, right? With all the, the well, in superstition. Fact, and she's dressed very like Our Lady of Guadalupe. The rose-colored dress, the, which and rose was a sign of love and affection and motherhood. The blue cape with stars on it, and blue was the sign of royalty. Yes. And stars here, she has command, she is the queen, you know, over the moon at her feet, the sun behind her, the stars. Um, and she has her court, St. Dominic and St. Francis. No, and this is interesting because the Dominicans and the Franciscans, from what I can gather, would have been in that area for maybe 200 years before. Yeah, or they so, brought the faith to that area. And they brought the faith, these two magnificent orders. Um, so she's, Our Lady is holding the child Jesus in her left hand, her left arm, and with her right hand, she's giving the rosary beads to, to who's she giving them to? Saint Dominic. Saint Dominic. So those who <laughs> maybe suggest that Saint Dominic, you know, wasn't instrumental in, 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 you know, have in the way we have the rosary nowadays, maybe this is a little sign for that too. And then Jesus is giving the cord, which the Franciscans wear to Saint, Saint Francis. Francis. And, and that's very interesting because Our Lady is almost smiling. She's looking to the right, to her right, as she gives the rosary to Saint Dominic. Our Lord is looking very serious and he's mm. leaning over giving the cord. And the cord, you know, we associate it with the vow of poverty that mm -hmm. the Franciscans take, but that vow of poverty was an association, an identification with the passion of Christ. Mm -hmm. The cord is all about the crucifixion, the passion of Christ. And so these two great devotions in the church. And she's also saying to the locals, isn't she, that, you know, forget about your, your superstition. Like these Franciscans and these Dominicans are the listen ones that them. I have listened to them. They're the ones I'm, yeah. I've appointed. I'm sending you to them. So the, these are really, really important. And and the rosary, of course, and this, the, the cord of, uh, of St. Francis. So it's an amazing, amazing... But there's another thing in the picture. And, you know, if, if after this program people Google the image, yes. and they'll see it. But to the right of Our Lady, just to the right, just above her head and to the right, mm. is the Holy Spirit, is the, a paraclete, you know, and with wings out, it's like a, a you know, as we, the symbol of him, the, the bird, mm. uh, with his wings outstretched, you know, over this scene. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful um, picture of she, the spouse of the Holy Spirit, the, the mother of the church, who the Holy Spirit guides, etc. It's a magnificent picture and a teaching picture. Teaching picture, yeah, and so teaching the, the local, the indigenous population so much. Now, let's just talk briefly about this actual image, right? Because the image in Guadalupe, obviously, and, and many of our listeners and, and watchers will know of the Guadalupe, and the image that appeared kind of above the tilma of St. Juan Diego. But this image, it's clearly not, it has been, you know, scientifically researched and examined yeah. and it's not painted on the on Yeah, the rock. And, and in fact, uh, the first time they suspected that, because they assumed it was a painting, they knew no artist had ever, this is a very remote place that no artist, they knew it was miraculous. But they still assumed it was somehow painted. Mm. And one day, the, the priest, who is now in charge of the church there, 
um, someone came running to him saying, the women are cleaning, they're scrubbing, you know, because it had gotten dusty. <laughs> they're cleaning it. And he ran to the church and there they are. They're very proud of their work. They've scrubbed the whole thing. And he's like, oh, it's going to be gone. But it was actually just clean. It was just as vibrant. These colors are vibrant. Mm. It's gold and deep blue and, uh, you know, they're very Stunning. vibrant colors, you know. Um, and they were just as vibrant. And that was the first time they realized this isn't a painting, but they didn't know what it was. And about a hundred years ago, geologists mm. were given permission, German geologists, who had the state-of-the-art equipment at the time, were given permission to take rock cores. Uh, you know, these are cores are like where you put a, a very fine drill mm -hmm. and you drill, and they use it to find out where there are minerals or whatever in, in rock for mining. So these Germans were given permission to make cores at the different colors. And they do, and what they found was that the color, be it the gold or the blue or the black of her hair or the red of her dress, extend in the rock as far as they could core. So that's three meters, which is almost nine foot. So we don't know how far beyond that Amazing. it goes. Yeah. So it's actually this painting, which is precise, like the eyes, you know, the eye lined, mm -hmm. you know, the everything extends into the rock as far, we don't know how far. So like nine feet, three, yeah. three meters. So you have the big question is, was it made at that moment? Like Our Lady of Guadalupe, you know, the bishop first saw the tilma and then he saw the picture come on to it. Mm. Or did God make it when he made, when he made the, that mountain? You know, at the, what, second day when the, mm. he rose the land from the water, the second day of creation. And it's, Third day of creation. And it's like a lasting sign too, isn't it? You know, just to remind us that what happened here was authentic, was from God. You know, a lasting sign that we've been given. It truly, truly is... Uh, is yeah, it it's, it's rock, it's lasting. But it's still very much alive in a sense. Mm. Because aside from the miracles of, that happened there, both physical healings, the, the wall of the church is full of plaques of authenticated miracles and the spiritual conversions and healings. Recently, and it was only noticed by pilgrims and it was noticed in photographs, the Holy Spirit has disappeared mm. from it. And if you look at, um, again, if you're looking online at the picture, in the pictures you will see the Holy Spirit, but in the most recent one, he's not there anymore. We can only imagine what that means. It's certainly a message. This is a living. This is an, Our Lady has not left this place. She's still talking to us here. It's truly, truly extraordinary. So, so dear friends, if you hadn't heard about Our Lady of Las Lajas, it's a very, very interesting story, isn't it? And reminding us that God can act in any way he wants and continues to surprise us and when I first heard about this apparition I was just thinking wow the God of surprises and amazing that we have something lasting like the the rock image to to remind us of this so dear friends if you enjoyed the show do click on the like button so that we can reach more people and also subscribe to paving the way home so you can be notified about future shows thank you for joining us God bless <laughs>